Welcome you all to Taxes YouTube channel. Today we're gonna talk about what is cryptocurrency or else what is Bitcoin. I'm gonna give you a brief idea of what is money and then let's talk about what is cryptocurrency. Okay, what is money? Isn't it those coins and notes that we use today that comes into your mind when we say the word money? Yes, it is. Those coins and notes that we use today have a specifically particular value that can be used when we buy goods and services from our service providers. And that value differentiates from country to country. This money we use today have a great history which has been changed from time to time into different forms. And this money is being controlled by a centralized system which is either the government or a central bank system of a particular country. And it's only the government or this central bank system has the access to change to make changes in this centralized system. I think you have a brief idea of what is money now. So let's move on to the main topic of our clip, uh, this, of our video today, which is the cryptocurrency. What is cryptocurrency? You may have heard the word. Your friends may have used the word with you, but maybe you have a slight idea or maybe not. So let's see what is cryptocurrency. Crypto or cryptocurrency. It is a digital currency that can be used to buy goods and services online, which means this is an online payment method that can be used to ex in exchange of goods and services online. But this uses an online ledger with, uh, with a strong cryptography to secure online transactions. Much of interest in these unregulated currencies is to trade profit and speculators at times driving prices skyward. Many companies have issued their own cryptograph uh, cryptocurrencies, often called tokens, which means any company that is interested in introducing their own cryptocurrency unit has the space to introduce their own. And these can be traded specifically for the goods and services that the company provides. Think of them as you would, uh, as you could have uh, like arcade tokens or casino chips if you have no idea what is token. You will need real currency for the exchange to access the good and good old services. Okay. Uh, if I tell you what is the history of cryptocurrency, now that you have a little introduction of cryptocurrency, let's look into the history of cryptocurrency. In 2008, Satoshi Nakimoto introduced Bitcoins to the world through his research papers. And that's when the world started talking about cryptocurrency. That means the world started to know what is Bitcoin or what is cryptocurrency in 2008 after those researches. Those nodes and coins that we use today can be touched and dealt physically. But cryptocurrencies cannot be dealt physically. They are all in on they are all in a digital world. And they cannot be stored in a bank that like, like we do in our bank accounts. We cannot store them in our bank accounts. We cannot save them. We cannot uh, deposit like we do with the nodes and coins that are not that we use today. Instead, these uh, cryptocurrencies are being digital and they are being controlled by decentralized ledgers. For example, it is mostly uh, the blockchain, blockchain that is being used as the decentralized ledgers in cryptocurrencies. It works using technology of this blockchain. Blockchain is a decentralized technology spread across many computers that manage and manage re and records transactions. Part of the appeal, uh, part of the appeal of this is uh, its security. Security is very important when comes when you are dealing with digital currencies. Now you may have an, uh, you may have like a thought, like a question of uh, cannot these are. Uh, Cryptocurrencies being hacked. 
it is very difficult to hack cryptocurrencies because it has certain mechanisms that are used to block hackers from hacking cryptocurrencies. One of the main, uh, main mechanism is cryptography. The word cryptography is one of the reasons we use this, uh, call this digital currency cryptocurrency. If I talk, tell you something more about this hacking, it's like this. You need to have a very, like a high rich database of uh, like more than half of those records in the network where you use cryptocurrency to hack the system. But it is very impractical when you're thinking about taking records of all of those people connected to this network, which certainly use a very big processing power. So it is kind of impossible to hack a cryptocurrency network. Okay, now you may have another question. How come this cryptocurrency gets a value if we are to introduce one? Well, it's like this. Let's give it an example. Think you and two of your friends are there gonna, uh, gonna exchange your cryptocurrencies, but like thinking of exchanging your own cryptocurrency between you three when you're taking uh, services from each other. Okay, the, uh, one of you are a software developer and your, one of your friends is a teacher and the other friend is a lawyer. Okay, this teacher friend of yours wants to create a learning platform, online learning platform, because uh, he needs one these days because of these situations that is ongoing um, due to the pandemic. So you create a learning platform for him. And then instead of asking for physical money, you ask, for, you exchange uh, those cryptocurrency units that you have been introduced between you three. And then this teacher, uh, there, there has been another service that is going between this teacher friend of yours and the lawyer. They also exchange the same cryptocurrency unit. And then first, initially, it will be between only the three of you. But then when we are with the time, this network can grow, can grow, like it can grow into a lot of people who trust in your network and join with you to do their transactions. And that's where the demand of your cryptocurrency unit goes up. And then the value of your cryptocurrency unit naturally goes up. So uh, the amount of coins that we have within us and the the, and, and the usage of those coins is the, are the main reasons for the value of this, it to go up. There, as I said before, uh, cryptocurrency is a decentralized system. Cryptocurrencies have no authority and can, it is it is not belong to anyone. It is being controlled by the network and the usage of it and the exchange of goods and services that is being done through this network. So it is a naturally a decentralized system. No bank, no government is involved in their system. Under the normal procedure, we may all have experienced the exchange of money, the transactions uh, we do can be like, uh, like with the involvement of a bank as a mediator. Let's say that you have a big amount of money to uh, send to someone, to give to someone. So to make it most worthy, you use a bank as a mediator. So you deposit the money that you have, that you want to give to your service provider. And then uh, that service provider uh, withdraw the money from the other end. But when it comes to dealing with cryptocurrencies, it's not in that way. It's like a di direct exchange of money. The person one or the person or you are going to give this particular cryptocurrency unit to the to your service provider trusting the network. So this network is built fully upon the trust that you have on the network. Now you may think like in bank accounts, won't, you, won't we be having any records of our transactions within this system, this network? Of course you do, but they are in, in store, they are stored in a distributed ledgers in a distributed way. 
Um, so that's why I said, even if you have a record of one particular person, that is not sufficient for you to hack the whole network. You need at least uh, at least more than half of the network's records to hack the system. So it is kind of impractical hacker to do that. Okay, now you may have another question. I know this topic is fully based on questions that you have. So next question you may be having is, where can we find this network? Where is this network is storing? Who, who hosts this network? How does this network is run? What kind of a computer power that we need for this? What is the processing power that we need for this? Okay. This is the point that we have to talk about cryptocurrency mining. And this is the point that where you're going to get the idea of a cryptocurrency miner. You, me, and any one of us can be a cryptocurrency miner. Before leave, I'll give you a slight idea of what is cryptocurrency mining. Cryptocurrency miners, uh, okay, okay, let's say what is cryptocurrency miners. I said anyone can be a cryptocurrency miner. Yes, and one can be a cryptocurrency miner. All you have to do is download the records of the, all those decentralized ledgers into your computer. And then you have to verify those codes using different sorts of algorithms. And uh, that is a competition between those miners. And the more the records that you verify, the more the rewards you get. So let's talk about how we're going to win this competition in our next video. I think you have got a great idea of what is cryptocurrency from our today's video. Hope you may have liked our video. So like our video before you go and subscribe Taxi's YouTube channel and don't forget to click the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload a new video onto our Taxi's YouTube channel. Hope to see you soon in our next video. Bye bye. Thank you.